Hi, I'm Alexis Mudd from the Randolph County Farm Bureau Ag in the Classroom program. Today I'm here with Mr. Tony Bauer and he's going to explain to us a little bit about how their chestnut orchard tree, orchard farm works. We have 25 chestnut trees here in outside of Room, Illinois. We got into this in 2012. We planted our first trees. We've got 25 trees right now that are actually bearing good nuts. This is our actually first year of a good amount of nuts, I guess you'd say. But other than that, uh, an individual got me kind of into it. He kind of talked about it. He planted some and it's just kind of went from there. I mean, it's more to it than what you think. So. And there's not many chestnut farms around here, so this will be an interesting peek at a new industry, a new part of the industry. Yes, chestnuts are, breweries use them. I mean, they make beer out of them. I mean, the health, the health to them, they're gluten free. Get online and read whatever you want about them, but they are very healthy for you. Uh, but like I said, bakeries use them, high-end restaurants use them, but uh, basically the ethical, market is where a lot of them understand what chestnuts are usually around here nobody thinks of what a chestnut is so so how do you start your orchard trees all of these trees here i have bought as seedlings that's about the size this is a one-year-old tree i just planted this spring uh, this is actually a grafted queen there's a, numerous types of trees we have dunstons and queen uh, there's several nurseries around. These actually came from Forest Keeley in Missouri. Uh, but trees that I have two years ago, I guess, I did sample, try to grow my own nuts or own trees just from the nuts. And we actually have 15 trees planted at my wife's uh, mom and dad's farm that we grew. But like I said, these are grafted. So these are going to be a true style of tree i mean once they're all together in a pile you're never going to say say this is one or this is the other one you know so here we have a sorting table for chestnuts how does this work so when the the nuts grow in these burrs, which I have gloves on because they are extremely spiky, you can't pick them up. So this is one that was green, being this late in the season, it's starting to open up. So as they start to open up and dry, this is how they will hang on the tree. There's, I want three nuts in a group, although we've had a tree that last year it threw four and five nuts in a tree, but that's how they'll grow. And then they fall in the ground. Hopefully that stays on the tree we go through with nut picker uppers and by hand, we roll them, pick them up, throw them in buckets. We'll bring them up here. We pick everything up because deer is my biggest threat really, as far as concerns I have that they will eat, is they could probably eat the whole, everything out in the night. But we'll dump them on here. We go through, we'll roll them around. Look, find the small ones, we throw them out, we throw them in a bucket, anything that's cracked, this looks bad, goes into a bucket. We roll them around, the dirt falls through that we pick up, they go in, and then they go in the refrigerator immediately because they're full of moisture. And once they would dry out, then they're kind of really no good. I mean, those have been sitting there for probably two weeks. The deer will still eat them. But I mean, as far as these, we just get them in the fridge to keep them cool, so. So do you roast these chestnuts like over an open fire? <laughs> you can, I mean, that is the most common way people know of it. Let's sing the Christmas song. But a lot of people will bake them in the oven. I mean, we bake them in the oven, we've roasted them here at the house. We'll cut them up, throw them on salads, you know, just eat them. Uh, my wife's made cookies out of them before. I've heard of people put them in soup, 
dressings at Thanksgiving and Christmas. But the biggest thing is, if you ever find chestnuts in a store, you always want to buy them cold. Never buy a room temperature chestnut. If they're not in the cooler, they're probably not going to be very good. But, I mean, this is a chestnut splitter, cutter, whatever you want to call it. But uh, anytime you cook them, they are full of moisture. If you don't score them, they will blow up on you. And all you do is put it in there, kind of crimp it, and then it puts an X across it. When they're done, even if you cook them in the oven, they will open up. And there's actually two skins to it. There's the outer shell, and then there's the inner shell. There's a, like a skin on the nut itself. Once they are cooked completely done, that inner, inner shell will just peel right off for you. But, I mean, yes, you can do them in the oven. You can roast them over a fire. You can cook them in the microwave. They're not as good in the microwave, but you can try them in the microwave. People boil them. I mean, there's numerous ways on how to cook them. of this chestnut orchard. Thank you guys so much for your hospitality and having us out here to learn about chestnuts. Thank you. If anybody would want to try them, you're more than welcome to get a hold of me. But unfortunately, everything that I have this year is already sold. So our crop is done for the year. They normally fall. If you're interested, you can get a hold of me. I can call you next year when they're, put you on the list of when they're ready next year to go ahead and get them to you. Uh, but other than that, they fall usually middle of September to about this time. So thank you guys for coming out. All so. right.